Hi, welcome to another session of ENT. I am Dr. Sanjay Agarwal, your ENT educator. Right now, I have been teaching ENT for 18, 19 years now, and that's a huge experience. I think nobody in the country can claim to have such so much experience in teaching. And in the last 18 years, I've also written three books, as you can see. First one, Dr. Sanjay, Dr. Agarwal's ENT in 2011. Second one was Review of ENT in 2017. And finally, last year, a book for foreign medical graduates called ENT4 FMG Graduates 2019. Right. But today, we are going to have a session on uh, questions. So, this is our first question, image based question basically that a four year old child was brought to ENT OPD with complaint of foul smell from the nose. The examination finding is shown below which of the following is true of this condition. So you can see the finding shown here and first one says that this is the most common cause of foul smell from the nose of a child. The second says immediate removal should be done. <clears throat> Third one says the station tube catheter can be used to remove it and four all are true. I think it's a pretty simple question. Everybody can answer this. So what do you think is the correct answer? A, first one, second one, third one, or the last one? I am give, giving you a few seconds to make up your mind. And in case you have, you would know that fourth is the correct answer, D or last one. Now, from the history and the examination, the image, it's very clear that this is a case of foreign body in the nose, <clears throat> nasal foreign body as we call it, right. And nasal foreign body is very common in children, especially a child of uh, 3 to 5, 6 years, if the child is brought to the OPD or emergency even with a history of foul smell from the nose, you can be sure that it is a foreign body. Foul smell in the nose of a child around 4, 5 years is surely a foreign body, but additionally, there could be bleeding from the nose and uh, uh, discharge from the nose, sometimes pain also. Why do you have bleeding or pain and discharge from the nose due to foreign body? Now this happens in kids who put the foreign body in the nose and forget about it. Either they forget about it because kids, you know, they don't know the importance of all this or out of fear that they will be shouted at, their parents will scold, shout at them, they don't tell their parents. So the foreign body remains inside and this foreign body gets infected in few days and the infection causes this discharge and bleeding from the and that's also the cause of foul smell in most cases right but if you leave it for longer say a week 10 days inside then calcium deposits on it there's a calcium deposition on this and now the name of this disease uh, condition becomes you know rhinolith rhinolith is the name now which is nothing but old calcified foreign body in the nose. What is rhinolith? Old calcified foreign body in the nose is rhinolith. <clears throat> right. Now, rhinolith and foreign body in the nose 
they present similarly which is given in the history usually it's the child and there is a smell from the nose maybe discharge maybe bleeding also now very important point is that in this the foreign body is usually unilateral it is never bilateral in the nose even if the child puts more than one foreign body in the nose the child will put in the same nostril suppose the child is right handed this is my right hand so if i have to put something my right nose it goes like this right nose and another thing right nose because the child is not you know it does not have that much of sense so if the child is left handed then he'll put try to put everything in the left nose so it may be more than one foreign body but is going to be in the one nostril only so most of the time you can diagnose very easily on anterior rhinoscopy the examination is called anterior rhinoscopy like this you can just see the foreign body but many a times the foreign body is a little posteriorly placed in the nose so it may not be seen on anterior rhinoscopy you know we will not be able to see it so you, if the foreign body is in the posterior part of the nose it is either the child has pulled in snuffed snuffed inside or sometimes the parents of the child or somebody who is not a specialist try to remove the foreign body in the effort in the process it gets pushed back right now this is very very important to know see can you see the foreign body in this uh, image you can see that the entire nostril is occupied and you can see only the anterior front 10 to 15 percent of the foreign body you can't see almost 80 to 85 percent of the foreign body basically and it's more or less round right so it is on the back side now the first instinct is that i must remove this foreign body immediately that's the correct, correct thing you have to remove the foreign body correct uh, immediately that's the correct thing now the first instinct is you take a forcep forcep and try to hold it with a forcep and you think i'll hold with a forcep and pull it out now what happens is because you can only see the very front part of the foreign body when you try to hold with a forcep it slips and if you try to hold something and that thing slips then what happens it goes back it becomes a missile it goes backwards with a lot of force so it gets pushed back and that's the real danger so that's the most important thing in nasal foreign, nasal foreign body that you have to know is that never try to hold a foreign body with a force never it's a crime almost the moment you try to hold it it will go back and it goes too much back then from the nose it may go back to the nasopharynx behind the nose the, and from nasopharynx comes under the oropharynx and then it go, go to the lungs and the trachea and bronchus so it can become a foreign body in the airway which is a very dangerous thing so that's why never try to remove a foreign body with a force but you have to do immediate force right so what do you do you need a l-shaped hook like for force l-shaped and you can you have many options for that one of the safest option is this eustachian tube catheter eustachian tube catheter is l-shaped or almost a j-shaped probe which is actually for the station tube but what you can see can you see that in this foreign body there is a space on the supramedial aspect of the foreign body superior and medial part this small gap is there so through that you pass this l-shaped and now it the hook goes behind the nose this part is behind the foreign body so if this part goes behind the foreign body now the foreign body cannot go back it cannot go back so and you pull it right so you pass it like this from whichever side has the gap in this case and uh, posterior medially you pass it and then you turn it like this when it is behind and then pull it right and that object which is l shape the tip must be blunt not sharp if it is sharp blunt edge uh, tip then it is going to cause trauma isn't it so it has to be blunt edge and this is a perfect for this a perfect instrument is this eustachian tube catheter it's a very popular instrument uh, which is used to remove foreign body also it is used to open the station tube that's why it's called station tube catheter right that's why all are true okay so the point is never try to remove a foreign body with a forcep a holding forcep right second question now you can see an image and you can see a triangular area so they are asking which of the following is not true of the triangular area 
marked in the image again it's a very simple question everybody can identify this area and choice one says this is a landmark for master antrum <clears throat> second one says master antrum lies to 1.2 cm deep to this area third says it's a useful landmark during tympanoplasty surgery and fourth one says temporal line is one of the boundaries of this triangular area right so i hope you have got the answer is it the first one second one third one or the last one what do you think 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 it's a pretty simple question isn't it right now we know this area what is this area this is a macuvens triangle macuvens triangle also called supra meatal triangle and the most important point or aspect of this macuvens triangle is the fact that it's a landmark for mastoid antrum so this is a landmark for mastoid antrum yes and mastoid antrum lies 1.2 to 1.5 cm deep to this so if you want to enter the mastoid antrum from this point you have to go 1.2 to 1.5 cm deep so second point is also true and there are three boundaries of this landmark because that's a triangle one of them is temporal line one line so fourth is also true one boundary is temporal line second boundary is a uh, posterior superior meatal wall wall of the canal posterior canal and the third is a tangent drawn tangent is drawn between the two so this is not a landmark so the correct answer is c c is not a true statement because this is not a landmark for tympanoplasty it is a landmark for mastoidectomy see mastoid antrum so mastoidectomy this area is the mastoid area so when you do a mastoid because antrum is opened mastoid antrum when you do a mastoidectomy so this is a landmark for mastoid and mastoidectomy not for tympanoplasty or meringoplasty the other year surgeries no none of the others yes you can say tympano mastoidectomy if i say it's a landmark for tympano mastoidectomy then it is okay right but only tympanoplasty no not true <clears throat> right so very important area this one i'm sure you know about this already then we talk about the third question again a uh, image based question a 8 year old child was brought with fever dysphagia and throat pain for the past two days the examination image is shown which is not true of this condition so you know very clear cut image is here it says this is a case of membranous tonsillitis a is it true diphtheria is the most common cause is it true then antibiotic is the main treatment option is it true and this can lead to rheumatic heart disease what do you say is it the first one the second one the third one or the fourth one think give me the answer should i tell you the answer is b this is not a true statement see you can make out there is a uvula in the center you can see the short palate and both side tonsils and below there is a tongue and on the tonsil you can see membranes of pus membrane formation of pus now membranous tonsillitis and follicular tonsillitis can be seen in the same patient the small ones are called follicles and the big ones are called membranes so they are together so you can call it a follicular tonsillitis you can call it a membranous tonsillitis right so that's true and fever throat pain dysphagia are the main complaints this can be seen in children as well as in adult but this was a child incidentally <clears throat> right now streptococcus is the most common cause group a beta hemolyticus streptococcus or you can say streptococcus pyogenes not diphtheria diphtheria is the second most common cause of membrane in the throat it used to be the most common cause in the past not anymore <clears throat> and the first line and the most important treatment is antibiotics most of the patient relieve with antibiotics and symptomatic treatment in rare cases you may have to do tonsillectomy also but that's less commonly done but antibiotics is the main treatment and this is the main source of streptococcal antibodies for rheumatic heart disease most of the rheumatic heart disease is due to the antibodies formed against streptococcus and the same streptococcus of this tonsil is the acts like an antigen for those antibodies which goes and settles into the heart and cause rheumatic heart disease so this is the cause for rheumatic heart disease that's true so b is the correct answer to this question right so these are the three questions that i wanted to talk about but i want to tell you that every weekdays monday to friday at 7 o'clock i am taking a session free session on an academy app it's called neat pg 2021 crack ent with dr sanjay agarwal 
So one hour session every day starts at 7 o'clock on weekdays only the entire month of July. So and it's free. So I hope and I wish that you join because it's really useful and think about it. Almost 15-16 sessions left. We are going to cover so many things. So please join this. But besides this, I have three courses of ENT, new courses coming up. One is called regular batch. The second one is concise course and the third is a revision course of ENT. Now regular batch, as the name tells you is a regular batch. So I'm going to teach entire ENT in 30 hours as you can see and this starts on the 27th of July. Right. So if you join this, you can use this referral code Dr. Sanjay 10. If you use this referral code, you'll get 10% discount on this. And then second, as the name tells you, is the concise course of ENT. The name concise tells you that it's the 16 hour course, half of the regular course. See, but in 16 hours, I'm going to teach you the entire ENT. Little fast, main points highlighted. And this starts on the 3rd of August. Right. And again, if you use the same referral code Dr. Sanjay 10, then you get 10% discount on this also. And the third course is ENT revision course through live MCQs, MCQ based for NEET PG 2021. And this is just five hour session. This starts on the 30th of November and ends on the 4th of December just. <clears throat> and this is, again, you can use the same course, Dr. Sanjay 10 for 10% discount. Now what we have done is the second and third, that is this concise course, and this revision course we have combined and we have come up with a plan called Operation NEET PG 2021. Right. Now this starts on the 6th of July, has started actually till December and we are covering all the 19 subjects and all the subjects are taught by the top educator of this country. So as you see that in this course, I told you the concise course and the MCQ based revision course are combined. So you look at the first sentence, till October, we are going to complete the 19 subject in the concise format, ENT 16 hours I told you, similarly the other subjects also. And from October till December, we are going to look at the second option, the second line, we are going to teach you, the, we are going to revise based on MCQ. So you have a concise the entire course plus revision, so this is a complete package of ENT. And in the MCQ part, we are going to cover more than 7000 MCQs total of. Imagine, and you're going to have 10 dentists and 50 quizzes and so much thing. And as you can see, it covers all the 19 subjects. ENT, if you can see ENT has 16 hours of concise course and five hours of uh, revision course. So total of 21 hours of ENT. Similarly also other courses, and they are being taught by the top faculties. You can see the names, or you can even go to the website of uh, an academy and look at the names. ENT is taught by me. Dr. Sanjay Agrawal. Right. So, uh, this is what I want to tell you. And if you use this, this is the faculty that is going to teach you this course that uh, I was talking about. <clears throat> and if you can use this referral code Dr. Sanjay 10, you get 10% discount. Now, you can use referral, this referral code for any course you want to join. It is not necessarily only for this course. Any course by any uh, faculty you want to join you can use this referral code and you still get 10% discount, right? So this is going to be it for today. I thank you and wish you all the best for future. It was always, it's always a pleasure to teach you guys. Thank you and my name is Dr. Sanjay Agarwal. Bye.